Gentlemen, we are back to our webinars. Uh, thank you for your patience and following up. Uh, again, we have very, very important topics uh, today uh, with us, Professor Dr. Sema Anak from Medipol, uh, Medipol Mega University Hospital uh, Group, uh, going to share with us uh, her experience in bone marrow stem cell uh, therapy on uh, children uh, cases. Uh, she is very experienced in, and, and one of the first professor who created the first children uh, bone marrow transplantation center in Turkey. So we have very experienced and deep knowledge, uh, uh, knowledgeable professor with us to share with us uh, her uh, experience on bone marrow transplantation stem cell therapies. Uh, professor, the floor is yours. Please share your screen and start your presentation. Good afternoon, uh, uh, dear uh, colleagues and uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege for me to talk to you about pediatric hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Uh, my background is about 33 years in this field. So uh, it is a, a very important topic really to talk about, I believe. Uh, Pediatric diseases uh, are treated by uh, stem cell transplantation, both for acquired like malignancies or some non-malignant diseases or congenital immune deficiencies, hematologic defects, osteopetrosis, mucopolysaccharidosis, lysosomal diseases. How do we decide? This is an international grouping. It is from European bone marrow transplantation group. Uh, they every in every three years they again write the indications for these uh, diseases for stem cell transplantation, and we use these uh, features for our uh, applications. It's an evidence-based ap uh, approach. And in these uh, the, uh, papers, we learn about every disease and whatever their uh, disease status is like and different donors. And accordingly, for example, AML, we chose uh, uh, CR, complete remission one, high and very high risk. Okay, match link standard, match unrelated donor standard, but for HAPLA identical clinical option and autologous GNR generally not recommended. This is repeated for every disease. So we know what we will do for these cases. This is of, of course not mandatory, but at least show us a way to approach. How do we find a donor for bone marrow transplantation? As you all know, we use HLA typing but it is not that easy. We use serologic, cellular, molecular uh, uh, approaches. And it, as you know, it is on six chromosomes and we are using five of them. Uh, these are A, B, C uh, and uh, D, Q, D, R. We are not using DP. Uh, and for each of them, we have two LS. So it is a 10, uh, LN system we are using. And we usually have a chance of two, 20 to 30% of finding a, a donor, as, except for consanguineous marriages. If you have such a big family, it is much more easier. And there is also a bank system in the world, matched unrelated donors. Now it is more than 30 million, they are voluntary. And nine or 10 out of 10 loci, we usually accept changing from one disease to the other. How do you uh, search for these donors? Okay, first we uh, type the patient, parents and siblings. If we have a HLA matching sibling, even six is enough, then we go on with transplant. If we don't, then uh, we go on for the bank I have mentioned, and also some family search sometimes. 
And uh, if we find a donor 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10, then we go on with mud, uh, matched unrelated donor transplant. If we don't have, uh, we either go on with chemotherapy or uh, we now uh, in these years apply haplo identical transplant from mother, uh, father, sometimes sibling. We have the other applications like pre-implantation. This is important uh, because uh, if there is a, a chronic disease and uh, we want uh, to save the uh, child, plus we want the family to have a healthy child, then we use pre-implantation techniques. And this is the first one uh, the, in 2000. Uh, it is uh, for Fanconi aplastic anemia. It, it is IVF method, really. We choose the embryo uh, without the disease and HLA matching and put into the mother. Uh, it is a well uh, uh, system for some families. These are our own patients for different diseases. Mostly we are using it for beta thalassemia major or some congenital chronic diseases. What about ABO blood group? It is not important. Uh, it never affects the outcome, uh, but uh, during the application, uh, according to the group of the donor and the recipient, we change red cells, plasma platelets uh, to different groups accordingly, and at the end, it changes to donor group. What are our sources? We do allergenic BMT, bone marrow or peripheral blood. It may be, as I mentioned, an HLA matched sibling or unrelated donor or mismatched family donor. Very rarely we have syngenic BMT. This is a plastic anemia, one of them. And the other one was the donor and it, is, it was very successful. We are using autologous bone marrow transplantation, mostly in solid tumors. This is uh, for uh, giving high dose chemotherapy. And we know that if we give this chemotherapy, the bone marrow of the recipient will be destructed. So uh, we take the bone marrow first, freeze, and then go on with chemo radiotherapy and give back the bone marrow to save the patient. This is uh, mostly used for uh, solid tumors. Rarely we are using cord blood. So, uh, now it is very popular to use gene transfer, but it is not uh, in practical uh, applications still. How do we get it? For peripheral stem cells, we are using the apheresis uh, equipment. Uh, for uh, bone marrow, we are using the classical uh, bone marrow uh, taking from the uh, iliac crest of the, the donor, then uh, filter and give directly uh, into the uh, vein of this patient uh, through the catheters. We also can collect cord blood stem cell and they are all given to the patient. But before giving this uh, stem cell, we have to prepare the patient. Uh, we usually use myeloablative appli uh, applications so that we can destroy the uh, bone marrow of the recipient and clean the disease as well. And also for immunologic uh, reasons, because otherwise it will be rejected. So we prepare with different drugs and total body irradiation sometimes. But for uh, older patients and non-malignant disease, this you may use reduced intensity or sometimes non-myeloablative applications. What do we do? First, pre prepare the patient. Then we find the stem cell source. As I mentioned, we do the conditioning one to four weeks. Then we give the uh, stem cells by central catheters. About in one month, the engraftment will occur. During this period, we keep the patient in a very special ward. 
uh, with filtered uh, air and everything is highly uh, checked in these wards. And after engraftment, uh, then uh, we discharge the patient, but the story doesn't end, unfortunately. There are always early, late acute problems and late effects, maybe whole life long. Uh, you may imagine TBI, chemo, stem cell transplantation. And if you blow this, there will be, of course, early and urgent complications. And we have to be ready to face them. What are them? Uh, first, you must uh, not forget one thing. We have to support uh, the patient with blood products, infection prophylaxis, nutritional and GVHT prophylaxis and psychosocial support. For example, after these chemotherapies and TBIs, the mucosa always get uh, distracted, destroyed, and there comes this big problem, mostly in the mouth and skin. And at the end, if uh, we don't clean it appropriately, the my, mouth might be like this. They can't eat. It is a very difficult situation, mucositis. And infectious diseases, of course, uh, before uh, engraftment, during engraftment, post-engraftment, and late phase. Before engraftment, mostly bacterial infections uh, are there and some fungal infections. But after engraftment, there comes the viral infections more. And if it is a late phase, uh, mostly in chronic GVHDs, we again see encapsulated bacteria together with virus and fungal infections. This is our most difficult problem, acute graft versus host disease. The name is there, graft against the host. After uh, we uh, prepare the patient with radiotherapies, chemotherapies, uh, there is always a tissue problem. And uh, both uh, by activation of antigen presenting cells and also donor T cells uh, that differentiate and migrate and uh, recognizing class one and two cells, there comes uh, uh, immuno. Uh, regulatory problem and there, uh, then target tissue destruction. This is very, very important. Uh, we've derived it into acute and chronic GVHDs. In the past, we used to, to say uh, less than 100 days, it is acute, and after 100 days, it's chronic. But now this is not like that. It might be uh, seen anytime. And uh, skin is mostly affected. Uh, more than 80%. It starts with uh, palmar and plantar areas first, then all the body, and it might be as severe as this. So it is a very, very difficult situation. Together with, with it, we had gastrointestinal tract problems about in 50%, and they have Sema Hanım sesinizi kapattınız. Sesiniz gelmiyor. Sesinizi bir açarsanız lütfen. Tekrar açtım. Tamam şu anda geldi. Devam edebilirsiniz lütfen. Ekranı full yapın lütfen tekrar. Onu yapıyorum da şimdi olacak inşallah. Tamam. Evet, tamam devam edebilirsiniz lütfen. Ee... Uh, when you look at the endoscopy, you may see uh, such a bad situation, ulcerations, exudas, edema, and it is a very, very important problem. And the liver, we see in 50% cholestatic hyperbilirubinemia, and it is uh, really 
is sometimes a big, big, big problem. Then what do we do? We do the staging and then the grading. And you must not forget that for four uh, grade, fourth grades, uh, the uh, chance of survival is only 5%. So we must either protect the patient from this complication or uh, we must treat it accordingly. What are the risk factors? Uh, of course, HLA is the biggest problem and the regimen, conditioning regimen we have used, stem cell source and the infections. We uh, treat them with different diseases. I don't go into detail, but just to see, we have to uh, apply either immunosuppression, inhibition of cytoplasmic carcinaria, uh, MMS, serolimus, or immunologic methods like uh, antitimosid globulin, monoclonal antibodies, extracorporeal photophoresis, and cellular uh, applications like mesenchymal stem cells. But about chronic, it is completely different. It is uh, like mostly rheumatic diseases like scleroderma, and uh, it is an autoimmunity and immunodeficiency picture. Uh, but it is also very uh, important for mortality, so we must also be careful about it. What are the risk factors? Of course, if you start with acute, this goes on to chronic, a older age, TBI, and etc. And as I mentioned, we have a patient different from the other one. You may, it may be like this, and all these uh, groups must work together uh, for uh, treating these patients. For uh, treatment, if it is local, it is easy, but uh, for uh, disseminated diseases, you have to use different important immunosuppressive uh, drugs. And also we have vascular endothelial syndromes, VOD is the most commonly seen of them. And it is a, a sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, SOS, uh, from 5 to 70% in different uh, reports. And uh, in the hepatocytes, in these areas, there are bleedings. And after a time, there comes vena occlusion. Uh, we see weight gain tender hepatomegaly and hyperbilirubinemia together with jaundice. These are for adult patients, but for pediatric patients, we are using these criteria now. Uh, and the most important of them is the thrombocytopenia and others are like the adult patients. What do we do for treatment? Maybe some of them might be familiar. Defibrotide is the only treatment for prophylaxis and also uh, therapy. Late effects, a very long list because we are treating pediatric patients. They have a long life in front of them. And you may see every system getting some kind of late effect. Uh, and uh, of course, secondary malignancies going back to school, dental problems. These are very, very important for pediatric group. And for pediatric group, we have to be planned vaccination, neurocognitive changes, quality of life. And also for these patients, uh, it is very important to help to transition, the transition from pediatric to adult medicine. And it is like this, uh, the for BMT patient and BMT center are stuck to each other. First, I want to tell this is uh, Galata Tower and the Zeppelin at that time come to this tower to uh, for the uh, people to get out. So it is like that. We are just like this. And we have to uh, vaccinate these patients accordingly. It's a multidisciplinary approach and we have to follow them for every system and all these tables are used for this. 
What about our center? Uh, uh, now uh, we are in Medipol, Medipol group uh, and it is a university, many different faculties uh, together with medical faculties. This is the main hospital, uh, but now we have a tower uh, added to it just near this building. So uh, we have better facilities now. This is our bone marrow transplantation group. Uh, I am the head of uh, the pediatric hematology oncology and the principal investigator at the BMT unit together with Yontan Yaman, Muratelli and Kürşat Özbilli. Uh, this is my boss uh, who sent me to uh, London for training in 1987 and from uh, 89 to 2011 I worked in Istanbul University Istanbul School of Medicine uh, and uh, well, I was the head of the pediatric BMT center there and after that I moved here for uh, since seven years and I am also a JC inspector going to other centers and check them uh, this is Yontem Yaman he is also trained in different uh, important centers of Turkey, and he is with us since six years. And Professor Murat Elli is uh, also from Istanbul University and specialized in different centers. Uh, and since four years, we are working together. And uh, Kürşat uh, is associate professor. She is ahead of the ward, uh, the very important. And uh, we, he's with us since six years now. And she is the head of the, all the laboratories and transfusion center, well-trained and uh, helping us for every detail. We have every subspeciality covered in-house. And we have a pediatric ward with 16 beds, uh, but now we'll have a, a separate ward for pediatric hematology oncology with 20 beds uh, and uh, we have every outpatient facility and pediatric emergency uh, and all the laboratories are possible and it is done in uh, the uh, center pediatric surgery tbis everything in the center this is turkey going up with bone marrow transplantations and 6,622 at 2018, 2018. Now it is almost near to 10,000. And in Europe, we caught up with the uh, developed countries. Our numbers are getting higher. This is our, our number in this center, total 274. And we may do haplocord, MAD, match sibling, and autologous transplantations. This is our group collecting bone marrow. And uh, we are a member of uh, CIS, uh, EBMT and uh, pediatric BMT unit is completely separate from adult unit. We have uh, now uh, 11 beds uh, and uh, we have the appropriate nursing and uh, we are doing, as I mentioned, every kind of bone marrow transplantation. And these are our patients. We are very happy. They are from different countries. For example, she's from Erbil, uh, the Kurdish area in Iraq. We uh, did the transplant for thalassemia. And all these, she is from, uh, for leukemia, Kazakhstan. And this is the smiling face after a good, successful bone marrow transplantation. Thank you. Professor, uh, thank you very much. If you can stop your sharing, there is a few questions. Uh, I have received it from different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you mentioned in your presentation, but they could uh, skip. Uh, they are asking that uh, from which age uh, of children you can apply or you can apply the process of bone marrow transplantation? I mean, From uh, neonatal uh, age to up to, we are uh, using uh, 18 years. From, from uh, yeah. We can do any time. 
it's anytime no uh, required. So yeah. what is the disease? That's the important thing. Another uh, another question that how easy and how quick uh, uh, you can find uh, a donor if uh, there is no matching donor from uh, the patient family. Now it is much better because now we have a bank in Turkey and it has about now 700,000 donors. Uh, so mostly we can find from that registry. But if not, we may enter the world registry, as I mentioned, more than 30 million people. So we usually can find. But uh, if we go out abroad, of course, it is more expensive. Uh, you have to pay for the uh, cell and also transport. So it is not that uh, cheap to the, do these really kind of things. From international, uh, because you have to pay all the transport, accommodation, and all the uh, rest. Yeah, except for that, just for the stem cell. I was just mentioning. for stem cell, of course, yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, Professor Sema uh, Anak was with us. Uh, with her uh, very uh, compressive uh, presentation. Thank you very much for sharing all your knowledge. Uh, I thank you to be together with you. And uh, hope we will uh, host you one, once more in our new uh, virtual events because I think we are going to continue because a lot of demand from different countries who are not uh, included in our uh, CIS market uh, now uh, from almost from Africa, from uh, Far East, uh, from Asia, so many countries are watching us. Uh, they have registered and they are watching from different countries, even from Canada, from New Zealand, from Australia. Uh, and they are asking when you are, organizing, when you are going to organize specific virtual webinars uh, for our country as well. So we promise them that we will do it as soon as possible. Hope you can also join in our next uh, events to contribute to share your uh, experience and and know-how thank you very thank much thank you uh, very much it is a pleasure uh, to be with you and share my experience uh, with all these experts so uh, i'm always ready to give as much as uh, important uh, knowledge about these uh, applications so i'm ready <laughs> can we say that Turkey is one of the leading uh, country on children bone marrow transplantation. Yeah, it is according to the numbers. Uh, yeah, now the numbers are uh, increasing uh, so much, and you have seen the map of Europe where what we are doing. So Turkey is now in a very good position in uh, bone marrow transplantation in pediatric and adult also. And adult. Uh, so. I think we are doing what we must do. As, uh, in the future, we'll go on and we want to, to help everybody. And I didn't mention we are having patients from many, many countries, from Ukraine to Kazakhstan to Iraq, uh, very many of them, uh, Georgia, and all these countries uh, are sending patients to us. And we are happy to help these people. Actually, I was uh, just uh, a week ago in your new building, a new complex, which a new tower next to the uh, hospital. It's, it's been built uh, with latest technology and been equipped also with latest uh, state of art of technology. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much for you and for your groups for uh, including new technologies and new uh, buildings to serve many more international patients. Uh, really uh, good, a big contribution from the groups to uh, treating international patients as well. Thank you very much for that. I thank you.